Welcome back to the fifth and final video of the Faith Five. Uh, again, my name is Pastor Zach Anderson in Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Forest City. And the fifth and final step is blessing. Just a rehash of what the first four steps were. And again, you can catch up again on our YouTube page. I have videos on all four of these steps as well. First is share. Share your highs and lows. Read. Read some scripture, verse, or passage, or, or story. Uh, three is talk about it, talk about the scripture, talk about your highs and lows, and just let it all out. And fourth was pray. Pray about it and give it to God. And this last step is blessing. And how I've been describing a blessing is this is the seal. And I go back to that because when, when baptisms occur, we, we say you're, you're sealed. This is a sealed deal. Everything has been given to God. It is now sealed. And you might need to just feel that seal. And by that I mean mark the sign of the cross on your forehead. On the forehead of those you're with. And let it sink in that God truly has everything and is all there in God's hands now. Blessing is grace on wings. Is, is what Dr. Rich Melheim describes it as. And by that I mean it's more than a wishful thinking. It's true. Yeah, this blessing is most certainly true. Absolutely. It gives power to change realities. It's spoken and received in faith. And this is the power to transform. So it's more than just a hope. It does a lot. It transforms your life. It tells you you're in the right spot. It tells you you're in a good space. And it transforms. And you receive that faith and you know it is sealed on you in your hearts and in your lives. But what are some of the gifts that that blessings can give us? In his book, this is what what he says are some of the gifts that are the seven gifts that come from a nightly blessing. Genuineness, authenticity, openness, self-disclosure, acceptance, empathy, and approval. All those happen during the blessing. And I agree with those. When somebody blesses you and says whatever words it is you decide to use for your blessing, they're genuine about it. They want you to hear this this promise of God. They're authentic about it. They're open. Hopefully you've been opened as well in this, the discussions you've had. Acceptance and approval. You've been approved. You're you're already approved by God. You're always going to be approved by God. And you you don't have to earn God's approval. And accept that. Acceptance is important for the person giving the blessing and also for the person receiving it. Accept that gift. Accept that, that promise on your hearts and know that it is absolutely true. And there are some words as well to think about here um, uh, about what grace really does on, as grace on wings. So what does a blessing do? And it does an awful lot. And Dr. Melheim wrote a, a poem that I feel is very helpful when looking at what exactly blessings are. Blessing is a sharing, and a caring, and a bearing, and a dearing, and a daring, a soothing, and a flaring, a B-E-A-R-I-N-G, and a bearing, and a bearing, a nearing, and a fair from a fairing, a C-L-O-S scene, and a closing, and a clothing. Blessing is a bracing, an embracing, and a tracing, Blessing is an erasing. It may be a chasing and a facing. Blessing is reconciliation. Blessing is release. R re lease and R E A L E S. Blessing brings new life, a new day, a new promise, a new way. Blessing brings new birth, new wonder, new worth. Blessing is a new start, new here, new art, new ear, new heart, new here, new there, new clear, new aware. New face, new place, new chase, new race, new pace, new you, new me, new us, new we, new a new. Blessing is grace on wings. Look at all those gifts. We can give our kids, give to our spouses, give to our friends and family every night with a blessing. A lot of things. We embrace it. You trace the sign of the cross on the forehead and you release and you can find some real ease in your life. Brings with it a new. We daily drown in sin, but daily are renewed in our baptism, given new life all the time. And that blessing, that seal,
promises that. A new day, new promise, new way. New, new, new. So when you go to bed, it's like grace on wings. Brand new. Everything is going to be brand new from here on out. That's, that's a promise. And that is sealed there in that blessing. Sealed with that promise that everything is going to be made new in your life. And wouldn't you like to raise somebody that says says these things, believes these things? Maybe you yourself need to believe these things. Wouldn't it be wonderful to believe them? And if, especially if you have kids, here are some words you can use, and and it's really an acronym that you can take take with and use and remember as well. And it really plays off of something we hear a lot in the church. We always do it this way: my home. We hear those words in churches sometimes. We've always done it this way. We always do it this way. So why not as a family, why not as yourself, remember those words for this reason. These nine words. We isn't not just me. It's not just about me in this blessing and what we've done. It's not just me. It's about we. Always. There's continuity in our family. Always. Always do it. Always take the time to invite God in. Always take the time to bless. Always take the time to listen to each other. Always. Do it. There is consistent action in our family. Make sure you do it. Take the time and do it. Set aside a time. Five nights a week, one night a week, whatever it needs to start. Just do it. And always do it. Keep it though. This way. There's direction to our actions. This is how we do it. This is how we give everything to God. This is how you can modify it. This this way. This is the way. God is the way. Make sure that you keep going that way. Give it to God. My, we have ownership. Take ownership of what's going on too. Take ownership of what it is you're saying. Take ownership of what you believe. Take ownership in what the scriptures are telling you. Just take it take take some ownership in what in your devotional life as well. Make sure you want to be doing it too. Don't do it just because you think you have to do it. Do it because you want to do it. Have ownership in what you're doing and keep up with it. And home. We're grounded. Grounded in home. Whatever home is, whether it's with your parents, whether it's with your friends, family, home can be anywhere. It doesn't have to just be where your parents are. And remember those words. We always do it this way. My home. Those words are filled with challenge, possibility, and hope. And through that blessing, we can have comfort. Shows the importance of God to the people who bless us. And just is important in your life too. Hearing those words, making all of these, all five of these steps, a part of your, your daily routine, your nightly routine. And again, five minutes out of your day, at minimum. Try to do it every day. Do it five days a week. Do something to start. Just make it become a habit. And make it with the sign of the cross daily. The cross is, is it's important to have that symbol on your forehead. Not only was it the seal at your baptism, but I will get there in another couple couple minutes here, of just theologically why why the cross, why why bless yourself with the cross as well. So what does it do neurologically to you uh, when you bless each other? The end result of blessing is a balancing of moods, stimulation of growth, a healing of damaged tissue a better metabolism and burning of calories and better all-around health. Similar to what I talked about when you share your highs and lows and you go deep and it's going to take time to get there, it, it can be a healthy thing, very healthy. It can take the stress away, can take, it can renew you, it can help you get a better night's sleep. And honestly, if this is true, you get a better metabolism out of feeling good, well, what an easy way to lose some weight too, if or even maintain weight. It's you don't even have to change your diet for that. It, I don't know how much it does, but it helps you have better all around health. Helps you to focus. Helps you to go where it is you need to go, and really makes a better you when you follow those five steps and give it all to God. And that blessing seals it unless you know it is absolutely positively true. There are many different stories uh, that he has in his book. I encourage you to watch his video uh, that is at the bottom of here, at the attachment. 
it's a 10 minute video but he tells basically half of his chapter a story of why it's important to do all this now because we don't know about if we're going to get a second chance this might be our one chance not all of us get a second chance and when those chances come what are you going to do with them what do you want your kids to remember about you what do you want people to remember about about you when you're at the gravesite do you want them to remember remember your life entirely remember what they didn't have or do you want to remember what they had and also who they can go to in times of of great stress like that would be and that's god and what a great way to be honored than than to really really have them go to god even in those times as well if you raise people in that direction if you help people in that direction who knows whatever situation you're in how are you using that devotion and what do you want to be remembered by so take time to watch that video too to just hear his his story about about what's going on and at nighttime when you make that seal when you make that promise when you make that blessing something else happens too not only does it remind you and i do this at home as well myself is when you bless not only do they know god's with them but especially with your kids if you have kids it lets them know that you're there as a parent and this is actually what the, he says in his book uh, one of his family stories as well it can mean the world to a child to bend down show some remorse draw the cross on the forehead and tell him you belong to god to mommy and daddy forever and ever and maybe add uh, this line as well nothing you can say or do will ever make us stop loving you and that's actually from somebody named karen when you make that sign when you make those promises let the people you're with know that you love them unconditionally no matter what let them know that nothing can stop that love no matter what stresses come up no matter what they say it might even be something they say about you and their highs and lows and you talk talk it out but know that you're going to love let that love shine let let them know that you love them let them know them know god loves you if you have kids let them know mom and dad loves you let them know that whatever situation you're in let them know you love them and and let that sink in when that cross is put on the head especially by you it's a promise it as well it's a promise of god sealing it up but i also think sometimes it's a promise of the person doing it that i will love you and i will be there with you as well through this and it will be will be there and and your kids other people wh wherever you're at you need to know that too that there are people out there that love you and why because there are so many variables in this world we touched a little bit about this uh, a little bit ago uh, a couple of lessons back i believe when we're talking about people that say you know god is dead things like that or it's impossible to believe in a god who lets all these bad things happen things like that you're going to hear that you're going to be put in into terrible decisions every once in a while you might make the wrong friends in your life you might might not who knows what's the situation life there's so many variables in life i can't predict them all and neither can can you nobody can predict the variables but even the attempt even the attempt to act of love it doesn't show so failure when when they pull away because sometimes people will pull away but let them know that no matter what you attempted it and that you're giving it all to them you're there for them and that you love give pray try trust bless and love and bless again because god's going to work miracles that's what god that's what god does best and we don't always know how those miracles take place or when they will take place but they do so what about the bible what does the bible say about about blessings here are a couple bible verses i'd like you to hear today the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine on you with gracious and be gracious unto you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace number 624 the lord will keep you from all evil he'll keep your life the lord will keep your you going out and you're coming in from this time on and forevermore psalm 121 the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 2 Corinthians 13 Grace, mercy, and peace will, will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. 2 John 1 
Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work work and word. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16. That's what the Bible says. Blessing today is a promise of God with a future and, ho and a hope. Hope comes from knowing who you are. Hope can come from knowing whose you are and knowing that God will take care of you. And I also go as far as to say as well, I just got done saying when you love somebody and they know you love somebody, there's hope there too. So that hope is alive and promised in that seal. So that comes out of there too. And a bless, blessing is God's work on uh, in and with us. That's what it is. It's not us who are doing the blessing. It is God blessing through us, that promise. We might be the ones there as well saying, I love you. That could be God through us speaking to that person as well. But God is very much at work and in that blessing process and sealing you up. And I will keep saying that word seal because that's really what that cross can be on your forehead is a seal. Very important to hear that. And when you have that hope, when you have the blessing of hope, new hope, promises of life, it shows us our destiny is secure in God as well. We're sealed up. We're God's. I've called you by name. You are mine. God says that to each and every one of us, especially at our baptism. We're God's. That sealed deal. Nothing can ever break that seal. Ever again. And you know what? It, blessings are a great equalizer as well. Take time, take turns going around and bless. Uh, uh, whether it's in a group, bless each other. But make sure it's not just one person blessing all the time. Because that person probably needs to feel the sign of the cross on their forehead as well. Absolutely. Because there are some priceless gifts. There's lots of gifts that come from blessing, clearly. But these are three, three other gifts that come from when you actually mark the sign on somebody. Time, touch, and attention. All three of those come. And the blessing can be as simple as, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Or it could be, God bless you, good night. Or you can use lots of words, like the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy, and the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Or it can just be, God loves you. I love you. Your mom loves you. And maybe you can go as far as to say, and there's nothing you can do about it. That, cause that love's not going anywhere. So pick something that, that you, you want to use when it comes to the blessing and do it. Because blessing can change us. can bring us joy, warmth, love, confirms and affirms, can bring smiles and names us, claims us, calls us to be God's children, brings joy deep as well. Blessings do so much. So much. And why the sign of the cross? I promised I'd get to this. And you probably already know the answer. Because the cross is the symbol of the greatest love, greatest sacrifice, greatest story in the history of humanity. It reminds them and you of who they were and whose they were. Who's, who are, whose are we? Who are we? Cross symbolizes Jesus who took the whipping, nails, insults silently in our place, recognizes that death is no longer the final word. So mark your mark each other with that cross every night. Whether the person's awake or asleep. If you have really young kids and they fall asleep on you, still make the sign of the cross. They'll probably feel it. Let each other know that they belong to Christ. You belong to Christ. All of us belong to Christ. We've been called and we're gods forever. Let those blessings sink in. Let it all really sink in and let it be a seal, a promise that will never go away. So that is what I have on the faith five. Those are the final, that's the final step of bless. Again, those five steps, share, read, talk, pray, and bless. So where do you go from here? I encourage you to start. If you haven't started, start. It takes time to get deeper and deeper. Build that trust. I've said that over and over again. 
Don't judge each other. The moment you start to judge, they're going to pull back. But take time. This is something that can be slow at first. Maybe it's five minutes out of your day. Five minutes. That's it. Maybe it's a minute a step. Depends on the size of the group you're with. But take the time out of your day to let God in. And this is one way you can do it. Take some of these steps and apply them to your daily devotion. Use as many of them as you feel you need. I encourage you to use all five steps. But again, make it your own. This is a starting ground. But use it as a way to go deeper into your life and the life of people around you. Give it all to God. Give what's going on good in your life, what's going on bad in your life. Read some scripture. Let the Bible in. Let the words sink into your life. Talk it out. Talk about what scripture's saying. Talk about what, what God's trying to say to you, maybe. And do it with a group. Great way to do it. Pray about it. Give it all to God in prayer. And bless it. Let it be sealed on your hearts and in your minds. So hopefully you can get a good night's sleep. And maybe just a piece, the peace of mind that you need. So give it all to God. So please pray with me. Dear God, Help me with our devotionals to let you in and to make you a part of our daily lives. But also at the end of the day, once we've talked it out, once we've prayed about it, once we've read about your word, shared what's going on, let your promises be sealed on our lives, sealed with a blessing, a cross on our foreheads, on our hand, wherever it is, let that be a seal, a seal that can never be broken again. And thank you for all that you've done to make that seal a real seal. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to all five of these lessons. I hope you're able to take something out of this. And uh, feel free to, to send me an email. You can find it on the, the, the Emanuel Lutheran Church website if you have questions, And as always. And I pray that this has been a blessing to you and will help you uh, with start your faith life maybe a little bit more your devotional life at least uh, or it can help help you build on it and i hope it's been a blessing to you and i pray blessings on to you today and always and just to end with a good blessing i don't know how this is going to work on a camera but a sign on your forehead blessings to you